you probably believe this is a turn signal or turn indicator or maybe you call it a blinker here in Norway we call it blinklys we, we tend to take two words here in Norway and just combine them and create a new one so blink means blink and lys means uh, light so it's blink light or blinking light so these uh, blinkers uh, they are not blinkers or they are they are turn indicators but they are much more at least they have two important features in addition to being a turn signal these are not the original ones when i fitted this small one i totally failed but uh, yeah now it's time to fix it because this is no good i can't go on any trip with this this is me and my motorcycle and this is thomas and his motorcycle we have decided to go on a road trip this spring his Yamaha Tenere is in excellent condition. My old Kajiva, not so much. I have a long list of things I need to do. Can I manage to get it fixed in time to the trip? Maybe I have another problem as well. What you can see here is uh, all the indicators, the blinkers I can find, up in my addict, my storage location, when I was searching for the new ones. Because I bought new indicators I want to test out on my Kajiva. But I don't want to be that guy who collects everything, becomes a hoarder. Most of these indicators are from old motorcycles I no longer have, or things I bought for a project that never happened. And uh, yeah. It starts to pile up, doesn't it? And uh, yeah, I have a plan and maybe you can help me out. But some of these blinkers I want to keep. For instance, these. They are the original ones for the Kajiva. I'll show and tell more about them later. This was also put on the Kajiva when I bought it, but it's not the original one. It's from a new model, so I don't really need those. These are the indicators I want to test out now. Why did I buy eight of those? That was a mistake. Something happened there, so I doubled my order, but at least I have spare ones. Okay, what about the rest here? I have a cafe racer project. I will be continuing on that soon. And I've been using these tiny, tiny, small indicators on it. And they are pretty cool, but I'm not sure if I'm happy with them. I've also bought these a bit more premium, a bit higher quality, and I like this. So some of this I might be using on my Cafe Racer project. I also have a secret motorcycle project. I can't tell you anything more. That is just crazy. That would be maybe in a year or something. And these indicators might be for that one. So, the rest here, I will never use them. So I want to give them away. If you want any of these, just contact me. Put a comment below here in this video. If several wants the same, I just draw one of you. I'll even pay for the shipping. This one maybe is most valuable. It's for a newer model Kajiva. You will know if you need them. This might be a bit rare as well. This is from my Honda CB400 1984-85 model. They are not in good condition. The plastic is cracked on several of them and this uh, rear mount is uh, rusted. This I think is from my old uh, Yamaha I had. And the other here is just aftermarket uh, stuff. I only have three of those, so if you have the fourth one, maybe, maybe you want this one. Just contact me, put a comment below, and I'll gladly give this away to you. But, back to my Kajiva. Okay, back to the... Let me continue with the Kajiva turn signal problem. So, this blinker, it's working. And the primary function, or the function that most people think about, probably you as well, is uh, signaling that you're going to turn. And it's working. But not very well. Let me compare to the original one. 
I've just uh, grabbed 12 volts here directly from the battery. It's quite a difference, isn't it, when it comes to the power? So let me try to blink it manually here. You can see this is very poor. It's not signaling very strongly. So when it comes to safety, cars and other in the traffic gonna actually see that you're blinking. Yeah, it's not very good. This one, the original one, is much better. But this one has another problem and that is uh, it's quite big and bulky. That is the second feature. The turn signal, it also has a design purpose. It's supposed to fit to the design language for the motorcycle. And this, this doesn't fit, does it? This is too modern, too small for a big bulky motorcycle. It doesn't really fit. And I knew it when I put them on, but I thought maybe, 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 but uh, I was wrong. This one, more fitting to the era for this bike. It's from 1990, but maybe these are almost from the 70s. They are a bit big and bulky. I'm not too happy with this. That is why the new one that I've bought, it's a, it, they do have like this retro style. They are just smaller. They are square, they are built the same way. So I think my new ones that I want to test out is like a good compromise. Still looking retro, but not that retro. And uh, let's test them. They are quite much brighter. Let me try to blink. Yeah, I think, I'm not sure if they are quite as bright as the original ones, but maybe very similar. I think these will work nicely when it comes to the brightness. So it, I think this is a good substitute. Small, medium, large. So I think I'll test out these. It's just one problem with this. And if you're wondering where I got them, if you are searching online on Amazon or eBay for square motorcycle indicators, plenty of sellers. It's just one problem. Can you see it? They are extremely flimsy. And if you, if you see here, the cables uh, goes it, it's not sealed here, it's open, so yeah, the quality sucks. It's the worst quality ever I've seen. And I've taken off the lid here as well. Three out of four, the, like the inner part is uh, crooked, uh, this one as well. So they are just not waterproof. They are already broken when I got them, so I repaired uh, two of them need to zip tie them and improve them they are terrible quality so don't buy these but this is what i have so i'll try to use them anyway and fix them not even sure if it's worth it but i haven't found any that is like design wise similar in size and in style but with better quality so well i'll try to use them but I'm sure this will not be my last time replacing indicators. For now, this, I think it will be better than this. And then the last reason, third reason, the feature of this, and that is just for this bike. I think maybe some kind of design flaw or weakness with this bike. And that is that this is actually some kind of structural part. Let me show you. Um, on this other side, I've already taken this one off. I can just take it out. And you can see even this one, I have, it didn't fit out of the box. I 3D printed this adapter. So yeah, I could make it fit into this part of the fairing. But look at this. Now the whole fairing is loose, even the front part with the headlight. So the indicator is actually a structural part somehow for the fairing to keep it in place. It's holding this whole front part of the bike. 
<laughs> and yeah, so what happened on my previous trip, because of vibrations and uh, this uh, indicator not being possible to uh, tighten the bolt too much, this fell off. Because what happens if you tighten this bolt too hard on this indicator, what happens is that eventually this will just fall off. Let me show you here, like this. So this is just uh, pressed into this uh, bolt. So I would think it should not come as a surprise when I say I don't want this to fall off. I want a better solution. And uh, I have thought about one. And here it is. It was probably for a reason that the original indicators had an M12 bolt here. Quite a beefy one to hold everything in place. But you can see even that one has started to come loose. I have bought these M12 bolts and I have already cut down. So it looks like this. And this is what I will be using with a lock nut. So it's not gonna fall off. And then I have 3D printed a new adapter that fits exactly into the fairing. The new indicators they have a hole at the end and that will fit into this second hole here in my adapter. So I have prepared a M5 nut to fit here. This is a smart way of combining 3D prints and uh, metal parts. This goes as I plan now. I can put this here. Let me use this plier and then I can just press this hopefully. This should be fine. And then I have found a suitable bolt that goes into here. While this big one goes into the big hole like this. Now this adapter should fit here. And the lock nut. Not sure if you noticed, but uh, this has a quite a strange shape. I have to admit I had to print some of these before I found one I was satisfied with. And that is because... Uh, and now we're back to the design part of these uh, indicators. They are... It's nice if the indicators look nice, not crooked and old. And actually, this... Uh, had some kind of strange shape to it. They were pointing a bit backwards and a bit downwards. So when you saw the bike uh, from uh, front, the indicators were like sagging down. Not sure if it's just this fairing that has been is worn and melted or has been deformed over the years, but uh, at least that's how it looks on this bike. So this bracket here now, this adapter has a slight angle, so it forces the indicator to point more uh, upwards or actually just in a straight line and also more forward. And now I can tighten this pretty hard. This 3D printed plastic is pretty sturdy. This is uh, PTEG, PTEG or PETG, different names. And then that is uh, quite sturdy plastic material. But what about this flimsy, terrible indicator? Is it possible to improve it? Yes, I think it is. And it's a shame, you know, you buy brand new stuff and the first thing you need to do is to take it apart and improve it. But sometimes that's what you need to do. I don't think I can use this sleeve either. So I'll just tear it off. One of the problem here is the design here is pretty poor, so it doesn't really fit snug into the housing. So I'll do a slight modification. I'll cut off here, make it a bit shorter, and I'll cut away these uh, flanges here. I think I can make a better fit. I also need to remove this to better fit my design.
Now I can get a bit uh, better, tighter fit here. I've also 3D printed an uh, extra bracket. Let me peel off this uh, support thingy. These 3D prints are not always perfect. So I'll improve it slightly. Yep, there, there it is. It becomes a bit more bulky, but I uh, think this will make it a bit more sturdy. And then I have to find a bit longer screw to put on here. And then I have made even one more 3D print, because uh, this uh, bottom part is also very flimsy. So by putting on this here, yeah, it gets a bit uh, more sturdy at the bottom. All in all, it's a bit better now. Still, it's kind of weak. Maybe I could have just replaced this whole arm with something better. Maybe 3D printed one less flexible here. I don't have a flexible filament, so maybe that is something I need to do, but I'm not sure if this will be good enough anyway. But Let's try to put it on, see if it works. And this should be a pretty easy job now that I have one separate hole here to put the wires uh, through. This should fit exactly into this. And then I have a separate mount with the MFM, uh, <laughs> that's Norwegian, M5. I try to use stainless steel bolts wherever I can to avoid them rust like this. Still they are, I think, they feel a bit flimsy. I wonder if they will be vibrating a lot or maybe if I go off-roading and hit something, at least they won't break straight away now that they are. So maybe this is a good thing. Maybe that's totally fine. So let's see how this goes. I'll put it on the other side as well and then testing. I think absolutely this looks much better on the bike. Testing. Yeah, a bit uh, aggressive. But they work. Need to put on the rear ones, then they will blink uh, slower. So that's the next uh, task. I think it's even more obvious here at the rear end that the original ones were just too big. And uh, it's the same here. The rear mudguard and the taillight is uh, kept in place by the indicators. Let me just show you how it would look like with the original ones. They don't really fit. Uh, the bolts are too big. Perhaps not that wide, but uh, they are quite big. They are almost bigger than the taillight. Not to my taste. I have uh, prepared an uh, extra set of these and done the improvement and I have 3D printed this piece this time. It's the same as the last time that the indicator now is attached to this uh, 3D print with quite a tight fit there, like this. Uh, to make uh, this look uh, not too bad I have made it so the hex bolt here is um, inserted. Thought maybe that was smart. Looked nice. So now it should be a pretty easy job to just put on these. I think this looks pretty nice. Then it's just to connect the wires and I'll put on these to protect the wiring under the fender there. While I do that, maybe I'll run a uh, short slideshow so you can see the different options.
I thought it could be nice to end the video here out in the garden. Get a bit out of the garage. The indicators are blinking in a more uh, normal speed now. It works nice. I know, this video is a bit silly, you know, fitting new indicators. How interesting can it be, really? Next video, I think, will be more interesting as I will be tackling a bit more challenging thing on this bike. And hopefully, I'll soon be ready for the trip. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Hope to see you back later. Now, let's finish up with some B-roll.